This is our first press car from Ferrari. You know they're never gonna give us a press car ever again, right? You don't know that. And then the guys that did the UI were finger popping each other's assholes. <laughs> because this is a complete and utter disaster. From top to bottom, this is the worst designed user interface and interior I have ever experienced, probably ever made in the car world in human history. Where's my phone? I've got a, I have a reminders list of places I want to visit. Yeah. And I'm going to have to turn, take Marinello off. You take Marinello, yeah, because we should never go there. After I'm no, we're I, not going to be allowed there. Yeah, that's well, that's what I meant because I'm not even done. So they said that we could drive it. I've got the key and everything. <laughs> Is this a trap? Feels like one. Feels like one. Those suicide doors. Yeah. They're not homicide doors, are they? You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And that... is the sound of the brand new Ferrari Pura Sangre. Puro Sangue, meaning pure blood. Probably named by a Slytherin, it's Ferrari's new V12 Chamber of Secrets. Except there are no secrets. The technical press release is as long as War and Peace, which we'll have a very special Hollywood guest help decipher later. But for now, all you need to know is this. Today, we find out what happens when Ferrari puts its foot in the ring of super SUVs. And we discover whether this is worth twice the price of SUVs like the Urus in the Cayenne Turbo GT. Because at $400,000, you're probably asking, per che? Which is Italian, for why the flipping heck is it so expensive? Well, today you'll find out. But before that, you should probably just listen to it. V12. That's 3.3 seconds to 60. And thank Zeus, Carl Sagan, God, whoever you need to thank, because this has a great big, naturally aspirated V12. 715 horsepower and a 6.5 litre displacement number. It has absurd amount of torque down low, so there's no daily drivability lost, and it sings all the way to 8,250 RPM, just like the GTC4 Luso that came before it. Glorious. Oh, and the transmission, manual. Okay, all right, you know what? That wasn't fair, okay? I'm sorry. That was a tease from a different video that we filmed on this same trip of a very cool car. I just needed an excuse to show off my Peloti shoes. It's thanks to Peloti who sponsored this video that we are able to do this. It's the whole reason we're in Europe is thanks to them. 
And because these are the shift shoes, you can still use them in conjunction with Ferrari's rapid 8-speed column-mounted DCT in the Pura Sangue. And if you think I'm getting too cheeky about this, you're right. <laughs> so more about Peloti at the end. It's so novel to experience this in an SUV. Lambo should have done this. They should have done an LM002 style thing with the Urus and given it some great big naturally aspirated V12. An engine alone can make a car special. So that's all this ever had to have was a special engine. Oh, it is fast. That is fast. It's not light. It's still 4,800 odd pounds. But it hustles. And it bangs off the rev limiter. It also has a lot more stuff going on. The suspension, for example. It's, I mean, it's got like, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's complicated. The suspension is it's complicated. Yeah, it's very simple. The Pura Sangue suspension uses high power density three phase brushless electric motors that can transmit force in a novel way via a twin lead ball screw connected directly to the hydraulic damper piston rod, which enables high frequency response and reduces friction, inertia, and package space. This interfaces with the side slip control SSC 8.0 and the 6W CDS sensor. Feel stupid yet? You're supposed to. You see, Ferrari like to use incredibly complex language to explain their suspension systems to make you think that no one can do what they do. So to simplify it, here's Hollywood darling Margot Robbie in a pool in Italy to explain. Definitely Margot Robbie here. So basically, Ferrari are using a next level suspension technology. This isn't the air springs or the adaptive dampers we're used to. This is proper active suspension. Kind of like that bow suspension we saw all those years ago in that viral video. Thank you, Giles. Ferrari have paired a powerful electric motor with what's called a spool valve damper and combined them into a single unit. Altogether, this generates enough force that they can actually lift the entire body of the car and incredibly quickly. That results in a few game-changing things. The biggest, the purest Sangue doesn't require anti-roll bars, so it doesn't even have any. That, and it can keep the car perfectly planted in the corners without compromising the ride. Got it? Good, now f off. Okay, I'm sorry for that, everyone. I don't know how I let him talk me into that. He's just always wanted to wear a bikini, I guess, so. The suspension is quite sophisticated, and it is quite good. The interesting thing about it, though, is that it doesn't feel like something special is happening. It just feels like I'm driving a car. The ride isn't insanely supple, it's good, but there is no side-to-side -side motions because there's no sway bars. And when you have it in sport mode, it is ridiculously flat in the corners. Turn in from the front is so sharp. And since this is a transaxle, the weight distribution is excellent. There's no sense of mass in the way that the car moves its weight around. From side to side, front to back, there's hardly any motion to it. But then the ride isn't bad. <laughs> it's really good. The only time you feel the mass is on the brake pedal because it just doesn't quite scrub off the speed the way that you'd want it to. And when you get any bit of slip, that's when you start to feel that it is over 4,000 pounds. There's no hiding it. There's nothing you can do. Because physics exists. And...
And what that means is that the Ferrari Pure Sangue has the ability with the suspension to do like, well, like a Chris, like, a, like a, I don't have anything to say actually. Basically, what's happened is that the Ferrari is overheated, so I had to pull over. The air conditioning turned off, and it gave me a warning on the dashboard. So, yeah, well, I mean, well, it's to be fair, it is completely out of its comfort zone here in the hills above Marinello, where it's made in the summer. Yeah. All right, back on the road. Temperature's looking good. <laughs> Downshift into first for the hairpin, up the hills. Here's the problem. I hate Ferrari most of the time. Okay, let me explain. Ferrari the company, as many of you know, are, what is, what's the word? It's like a weird cult almost. Did you know that when you go to the Ferrari factory, you have to wear pants, you can't wear shorts for a multitude of reasons that I don't really understand? And you're left with kind of a weird taste in your mouth. What is this brand? What's it about? Why do they think that their don't stink so much? And sometimes it's to their detriment. They can never admit when they're wrong. Look at Formula One. <laughs> But when you get in one of these stupid cars and you drive it up the hills above Marinello, even this SUV, you start to understand. <laughs> the cars are so good. They're chassis masters. Even though the steering in this, in my opinion, is a little bit too light, it's still so sharp and the car feels alive all the time, the combination of the engine and the transmission and the weight distribution. It's just so good. Oh, and the engine is overheated again and the air conditioning is turned off. So I'm gonna go back and talk to James. Okay. This is my car. I'm a sucker for a blue car. On pain of death, I've been told to call this a car, not an SUV. Yes, well, it is still an SUV. In it, yeah. Because yeah. it's still four by four, it has yeah. a bunch of utility. Yes. It's only three centimeters shorter in the roofline than an Urus. Yes, and it's significantly taller than the GTC4 Luso. I think that does make it the lowest super SUV. So there you go. Okay. It's an L SUV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. But the car itself is not an L, it's a bit of a dub. Is that? Lost in a wind, is that what you're doing there? Yeah, because... I explained it for you. I, I understood it. The, <laughs> <laughs> there's this new thing called Instagram and I, I've had a look at the comments and it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, everyone has said that this looks like a, what is it, a Mazda MX-30? MX-30, from the, from the profile. And you know what? It does. It's not the best comparison from Mazda to Ferrari. No. I think it looks like the Toyota Crown SUV, especially the front with the <laughs> lights. Does. And I, it's, yeah. it looks so similar that someone copied someone's homework. Yes, it, no, it looks exactly like the Crown if you took a photo of the Crown with a wide angle lens. I would just, I would just match the colors. I haven't seen them <laughs> matched, but that's, that's what it looks like. It's good looking. It is good looking. I don't have a problem it, with it. But normally when we're standing on the side of a mountain and we've just driven a Ferrari, yeah. we stand back and go, oh. Yeah, you know, the 296, we were like, oh, there's a bit of Ford GT there. Was that what that. I was driving? Yeah. Oh. This it, is just pretty. It, it might be because it's an SUV. It's a very pretty SUV. <laughs> it, it looks like, this is basically the same color spec when we drove the Stelvio Quadrifoglio and it looks like the ultimate version of yes, the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. It is. Except it can do that. It has a clamshell. Yes. This is a, <gasps> underneath that clamshell. Is a front mid-mounted naturally aspirated V12 with the red anodized valve covers. It's a Ferrari. Yes, it is. And this is one that's adorned in blue Corsa with brake oh, calipers no. the size of my leg. Ready? Yeah. No, no, it looks great. It looks really good. It is quite low. It, listen, it looks more, I feel like I've said this sentence before, it looks more like a raised hatchback than it does an SUV. So there's that. But it isn't a car, which is what... The car, <laughs> this is like boat versus yacht. Yeah, sure. Except this yacht... Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, you, you did a short press. Yeah, yeah. So a long press, press will open them all the way. Give me another chance. Give me another chance. Yeah, okay, ready? Go ahead. Long, long press. press. And it should stop. Yeah, it stops at me, yeah. which is nice. This, is, this cool. is a very intuitive thing. People have complained about these. There's actually, I don't know what happens in the freezing winter time. That's always the case. Yeah, so it could not work. But, but I want to, what if I want to go more open? No, you can't do that now. Okay. There we go. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Beautiful rear passenger. 
compartment in a Ferrari. Anyway, I will say that this is a good looking vehicle. I don't have really any issues with the way it looks. No. We've tended to have issues in the past with Ferrari's interiors, but it's improved. I'm going to show you how. Okay. You go, you go. Oh, I, oh, I'm being relegated. I see. Yes. Okay. All right. Inside a Ferrari. Yep. So I've, it, I've complained about this stuff ad nauseum. I don't know if it's even on the right turn. Because it's been worthy of complaint. Yes, because it's been horrible. But they've come a short way. <laughs> <laughs> they've right. come a short way, yes. Uh, they've the, improved some things, they have. The yeah. steering wheel was always the way we fought this car. Yes. Well, sorry, Ferrari, the new Ferrari stuff. Yeah. And this has changed. This is now a directional pad. That, it's got an indent. It's indented. It used to just be a square. There's no haptic feedback, though. No, there isn't. But it does. You don't have to look. You can kind of feel. You know, there's years of playing video games. Yes, teaches me that. So, and the good news is, in the terrestrial app stuff, is that yes. the right word? I don't know. The, I don't in, think the, so. Uh, the native, we know app, the native Ferrari. Yes. App. There you go. It's, it's a bit it quicker. Is, it's quicker. It is quicker. No like, question. That's quicker. But in Apple CarPlay, it's still a little bit laggy. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, and because there's no haptic feedback. The lag means you still wonder when it moves. So it moves. Yeah. Right. So if it's definitely menu. better than it was. I will say it's better than it was, but it's still not. I just want I just want Apple CarPlay to be a touchscreen, right? This isn't just Ferrari. Mazda does the same crap too. But the my the biggest issue that I have that hasn't been changed is that you either get Apple CarPlay or your tachometer. And since I have an 8,250 RPM red line, I want to see it and feel it and breathe it and watch it happen. But you can't because you're constantly using Apple CarPlay when you go places. Yes, so. because maps are not just map programs anymore, they're traffic apps. Yeah, they tell me when there's a speed So camera. even if you know the route, you still want to know where you're going. Yeah, speed cameras, cops, yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, so that you can wave at them. So I, so I basically never get to see my tag. It's just yeah. a weird, I still can't over the choice. So, but I do have this screen yeah, now. Yeah, 5% better, and now you have your own cockpit. Yes, which is, which is, which is pretty good, actually. It, I can't see it. From the driver's perspective, reasonably you, quick. you can't see it at all. No, you can't see it. I can just I, see a bunch of fingerprints. Yeah, there's that, for sure. But I can get, I can get information on it, right? I, I can get my air quality. And from there, I don't you, really know. I don't really know why I have that. You can control the Burmester sound system from I can. There. And uh, I can get my own tack. Well, see, now I've got one. Why would you need one? Just, you're just going to keep telling me when I'm about to hit right Yeah, line. you're like, and shift. This just becomes a rally crew. <laughs> it's yeah. Good job. yeah, yeah. Three, R, four, over the crest. <laughs> but this isn't exactly new for Ferrari. They've been doing this before. The GTC4 Lusso had a similar thing to this, right? Yes, yes. But this level of cockpit feel, like it looks identical. I just have a steering wheel compared to you. Yes. No, it's cool. Do you think the Burmester sound system is better than that in the the, of the premium Bang & Olufsen in the Urus? In the Urus? I, they're on par. Yeah. Like, you'd have to get out of one immediately into the other with the same song to know. But yeah. like, it's because well, you cried good. when you were listening to no, Elton James, John. No, James, you cried. You can't just keep saying it was me. Right. You teared right. up. That's but how good the Bang & Olufsen <laughs> was, okay? <laughs> okay, anyway. Look, I'm in touch with my emotions. You're allowed to be now. <laughs> Final thing is this little do hickam her right here. <laughs> Why I don't, that work? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to call it because it's not logical. Um, you push this little thing, and uh, this is more for you than it is for me. I can control all my stuff on yes. here. It is, is it is slightly slow. Like if I want to, let's say I want to change the fan speed right now. Yes. I, I click the fan. Yep. I pick that out, and then I get the full scale, uh, you know, movability of the wheel. Yes. And I can change the temperature. Yeah. I can change the fan speed. However, that is quite slow to go in and out. And I found out that you just press that and you, you can still, the top. <laughs> you can still change it. So it's pointless that it moves in and out. Yes, and then this sync button allows yes. you to choose which seats you're controlling. So this right. is, when you press it, it's very, it's very subtle in, in there. That's me, you, back left, back right, back left. I can't even see it from here, it's just a glare. Yeah, um, it's quite fingerprinty. And when closed, I don't think that looks Four hundred thousand dollars. No, it doesn't. It's piano black. Neither does this area down here. To be no, fair. No, no. And if you compare this to something like the Bentayga, and again, when it comes to performance and sportiness, this definitely beats that. But of when it, it comes does, to yeah. like, I made it. Here's my epic SUV. Yeah. Something like the Bentayga is going to have a more rewarding center Interior. console. Yeah, but, yeah. but the, it is very cool in here. And you, there is a center console back there with its own controls yes. and dial, right? Yes, and yeah. its own. Uh, sports seats. Yes, the, well, the, the seats back there are quite comfortable. And? Magic Sky. Ma no, it's not Magic Sky. So it's, that's that's Mercedes, Magic Sky TM. It's Mercedes, right. Mercedes. It's, this I is just this. the electrochromatic. Electro it becomes brighter or darker. It's not that much of a difference, I will say. I like it. But it is pretty cool. It's that brighter, technology, because you can still, I feel like darker. Boeing 777s have those now. 
They do. Yeah. It's so cool. It is pretty neat. And then one asshole in the cabin says, <laughs> I want to see what the mountains look like at night. <laughs> or in the day, and everyone's yeah. asleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but fortunately in this car, you can only upset a maximum of three yeah, other exactly. people. I'm trying to love, I'm trying to watch Love Actually. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, think, I think it all being trimmed in the black leather does the car a disservice, actually. I think yes. it makes it look the a leathers bit more... are really nice, and yeah, everything the... smells good in here. It smells like a Ferrari. Oh, it's yeah, my... it's full Ferrari in here. Even yeah. the, the, the pedals are just like, you know, yeah. absolute Ferrari level. But the, uh, but the but when I've seen this with like the tan interior or the different colors, and it makes all the carbon fiber and all the other stuff just pop. Yeah. But so overall, though, it is this is a very cool thing, right? Let's, let's for the second, say, who cares if it's an SUV? Who cares if it's a car? Whatever. This is a front engine V12, four seat, four door uh, I, I, Ferrari. I it was a front mid. So front mid engine V12, yes. four seat, four door Ferrari. It's cool. It is. It's automatically cool. It is. The, the engine was all it needed to have. Pretty much. And then it comes yep. in with that amazing suspension that's good enough for Margot Robbie, it's good yep. enough for us. <laughs> and I think, uh, yeah, I think they've. It's just, it's just check. What's the Ferrari SUV like? It's a Ferrari SUV. Yeah. So, is the Pura Sangue worth $400,000? Annoyingly, yes. Ferrari could have half-assed it. They could have just leaned into their image and distracted us with pretty things. But that trick would only have lasted so long. The car audience are not fools. The great news then is that Ferrari actually did it properly. Relative to the other super SUVs, the Pura Sangue has that Ferrari-ness that they don't have. Which does mean that at least our tester was hot in one more way than you'd want. But it's way more emotional than a Cayenne Turbo GT. More purposeful than an Audi Borghini Urus. More delicate than a BMW X6M competition. Between the suspension, the engine, the short steering ratio, the looks and the badge, Ferrari have managed to recreate their unique formula and their flair in an entirely different class of car. One that by its very nature puts practicality and utility first. Not Ferrari's usual MO and in setting out to make a not SUV, Ferrari have accidentally made the best super SUV yet. And once again, thank you to Peloti for making this Euro trip possible. We are rocking the shift shoe in this video, and to be honest, we haven't stopped wearing them literally every day for many months now, like the whole team. They are comfortable, they make driving and working the pedals very easy, and they come in 10 colors, all of which are handmade in Portugal using Italian suede or leather. And with the code THROTTLE15, you can get yourself 15% off of your order. Free shipping and free returns. Thanks for watching. I want to have more fun with it. By the time I know it, I want to be able to be like cheeky. <laughs> the cheeky Margot. <laughs> okay. Margot with her Merlot. <laughs> Why don't you take a big old swig of wine? That'll loosen you. Big old swig of wine. <laughs> yeah. This Hollywood stuff's tough. <laughs> yeah. Leo the other day, he called me and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, now I'm 26, doesn't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Giles. kind of waiter doesn't wear shoes? I just spilled so much wine in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, Ferrari are using... Sorry, sorry, don't move, don't move, don't move. <sighs> what was that? You can look in the water right there if you're so inclined. Oh my god. <laughs> what was it? I just saved your life. <laughs> Calling my agent. <laughs> it was a massive spider. That Huge spider. It crawled over his head. His Italian head. spider. This isn't your natural. I had it.